What do you get when you cross a bull with a cheetah and give it razor sharp teeth? You get Carnotaurus, the most misunderstood predator of the late Cretaceous period. While T-Rex was busy crushing bones with its massive jaws, Carnotaurus was doing something completely different, something that made it one of the most successful hunters in South America. The secret wasn't in its bite force or its intimidating horns. It was in a muscle system so advanced that it could reach speeds that would make modern predators jealous. For decades, paleontologists thought bigger jaws and stronger bites were the only path to predatory success in large theropods. The formula seemed simple enough. Develop massive skull muscles, reinforce the bone structure, and crush your prey into submission. This approach worked perfectly for creatures like Tyrannosaurus rex, which dominated the late Cretaceous landscapes of North America, with a bite force that reached an astounding two and 877 pound force. The T-Rex skull was built like a sledgehammer designed to withstand the tremendous stresses of crushing bone and cartilage. Every aspect of its anatomy supported this brute force strategy from the robust construction of its jaw joints to the banana sized teeth that could puncture through the thickest hide. Then came Carnotaurus and everything paleontologists thought they knew about large predator success got turned upside down. This South American giant possessed a bite force of only 751 pound force, less than a quarter of T. Less than a T, Rex's crushing power. The numbers seem to suggest that Carnotaurus was a failed experiment, a predator that couldn't compete with the bone crushing champions of its era. How could a creature with such a seemingly weak bite survive alongside other massive carnivores that ruled the late Cretaceous period? The answer lay in the fundamental design differences between these two predatory approaches. While T-Rex invested everything in raw crushing power, Carnotaurus took a completely different evolutionary path. Its skull was proportionally shorter and deeper than any other large carnivorous dinosaur, but this wasn't a design flaw. It was a precision instrument. The lightweight skull construction and forward projecting jaw mechanics were optimized for something T-Rex could never achieve lightning fast strikes that prioritize speed over strength. Biomechanical analysis revealed that Carnotaurus possessed a high degree of flexibility within its skull structure, especially in the lower jaw, as somewhat similar to modern snakes. This flexibility allowed the dinosaur to deliver rapid, precise bites to vulnerable areas of its prey, rather than attempting to crush bones outright. The upward curving jaws and moderately broad snout created a system designed for quick attacks and swift retreats and a hunting strategy that relied on surgical precision rather than overwhelming force. The mystery of how speed could triumph over raw crushing power becomes clearer when you consider the tactical advantages this approach offered. Carnotaurus could target smaller, more agile prey that would be difficult for slower, heavier predators to catch. It could also deliver multiple quick strikes to larger prey, wounding them, and then waiting for weakness to set in. This precision-based hunting strategy required a completely different set of anatomical adaptations, starting with the remarkable muscle systems that made such incredible speed possible. Building a two-ton predator that can outrun most modern animals seems impossible, yet Carnotaurus pulled it off through engineering innovations that would make automotive designers jealous. The challenge of creating speed in such a massive theropod body becomes clear when you consider that smaller, naturally fast dinosaurs like Compsognathus achieved their velocity through lightweight frames and long slender legs. Carnotaurus needed to move a 26 foot frame at incredible speeds while maintaining the structural integrity required for a large predator. The solution required rethinking everything about theropod locomotion. Most people would expect the secret to lie in the legs, but the key was hidden in an unlikely place, the tail. While other large theropods use their tails primarily for balance, Carnotaurus transformed this appendage into a biological turbocharger. 
The corda femoralis muscle system located within the tail attached directly to the fourth trochanter on the thigh bone and served as the primary power source for each running stride. This muscle arrangement was fundamentally different from the hip-based propulsion systems found in other large carnivorous dinosaurs. The anatomical evidence reveals just how specialized this system had become. The caudal ribs extending from Carnotaurus's tail vertebrae were uniquely angled upwards, forming a distinctive V-shape that created additional space for muscle attachment. This unusual arrangement allowed for an exceptionally large cordofemoralis muscle to develop with researchers calculating the muscle mass at 245 to 302 pounds per leg. The muscle pulled the thigh backward with incredible force during each power stroke, generating the propulsion needed for high speed locomotion. This system worked by contracting the massive tail muscles to drive the femur backward through its full range of motion. The left femur of the discovered specimen measures 40.5 inches in length, but shows an average diameter of only 4.3 inches, indicating legs built for efficiency rather than brute strength. The interlocking morphology of the anterior caudal vertebrae enhanced muscle power, but created a trade-off. The rigid tail structure reduced Carnotaurus's ability to make sharp turns while running. Modern animals provide some comparison points, but none match the sophistication of the Carnotaurus system. The iliopsoas muscle in contemporary mammals serves a similar function for hip flexion, but the sheer scale and mechanical advantage of the uh, cordo femoralis arrangement was superior to other theropod designs. The combination of massive muscle mass, efficient lever mechanics, and specialized bone structure created a locomotion system optimized for sustained high-speed pursuit. The calculated results speak for themselves. Carnotaurus could reach top speeds between 30 and 35 miles per hour, making it comparable to a modern cheetah. This placed it among the fastest large theropods ever discovered and fundamentally changed what was possible for hunting strategies in late Cretaceous South America. Such speed meant Carnotaurus could pursue prey across open terrain, deliver rapid strikes and retreat before larger competitors could respond. The engineering trade-offs that prioritize straight line speed over maneuverability shaped every aspect of how this predator approached hunting and territorial competition. In 1984, paleontologists found something that would challenge everything we thought we knew about theropod evolution. The Carnotaurus skeleton discovered in Argentina's Chubut province came with an extraordinary bonus that had never been seen before in a carnivorous dinosaur. Perfectly preserved skin impressions covering multiple body regions. This discovery would fundamentally alter our understanding of how theropods develop their outer coverings and what evolutionary paths they actually followed. The prevailing scientific narrative at the time suggested that theropods were on a clear evolutionary trajectory toward becoming birds with feathers representing a crucial transitional feature. Paleontologists expected to find evidence of primitive feather structures, or at least some indication that large theropods were developing the integumentary systems that would eventually enable flight. The assumption was that all major theropod lineages were moving in this same evolutionary direction, gradually developing the characteristics that would define modern avian species. Instead, the Carnotaurus skin impressions revealed something completely unexpected, a detailed mosaic of polygonal non-overlapping scales covering the shoulder thoracic tail and possibly neck regions. These scales measured approximately 0.2 to 0.5 inches in diameter and were divided by thin, parallel grooves that created a distinctive pattern across the preserved body surface. Not a single trace of feathers appeared anywhere on the specimen, despite the exceptional preservation quality that captured even the finest surface details. This preservation represents one of the rarest finds in paleontology requiring specific environmental conditions that allowed organic tissues to fossilize with such incredible detail. 
the basement scales showed remarkable variation, ranging from small and elongated forms to large polygonal shapes with circular to lenticular patterns appearing in different body regions. This scale differentiation may have served thermoregulatory functions, helping the massive predator manage body heat during its active hunting lifestyle. The broader implications fundamentally challenged assumptions about theropod evolution. Carnotaurus represented a completely different evolutionary strategy, one optimized for terrestrial speed rather than aerial capabilities. This discovery proved that not all theropods were evolving toward flight capable forms and that multiple successful evolutionary pathways existed within this diverse group of predators. The scaly integument of Carnotaurus positioned it as a specialized terrestrial hunter, perfectly adapted to its unique South American ecosystem. While T. rex ruled the north, an entirely different dynasty of predators controlled the southern continents. The Abelisauridae family dominated Gondwana during the late Cretaceous period, becoming the apex predators in ecosystems across South America, Africa, and Madagascar. These southern giants evolved completely different hunting strategies from their northern cousins, creating a predatory empire that lasted millions of years. The challenge of multiple large predators like Carnotaurus, uh, Ochosaurus, and Abelisaurus coexisting in the same ecosystems seems impossible at first glance. How could several massive carnivores share the same territory without driving each other to extinction through direct competition? The answer lies in the specialized hunting strategies that allowed each species to exploit different ecological niches within their shared environment. Carnotaurus's speed-based hunting strategy opened up prey opportunities that its bone-crushing relatives couldn't access. While other abelisaurids focused on ambush tactics and overwhelming force, Carnotaurus could pursue fast, smaller prey across open terrain. The La Colonia formation environment of Argentina, dating to 71 to 69 million years ago, provided the perfect hunting grounds for this approach. The region featured estuaries, tidal flats, and coastal plains with seasonal climate variations that supported diverse fauna, including serratodontid, lungfish, turtles, plesiosaurs, crocodiles, dinosaurs, lizards, snakes, and mammals. This varied ecosystem meant Carnotaurus could target different prey than its competitors. Smaller, agile dinosaurs became primary targets, while hit and run tactics proved effective against larger armored sauropods like Saltosaurus and the Titanosaur Titanomachia gimenezi. The biomechanical data supports the idea that sauropods would have been preferred prey items for Carnotaurus, but its approach differed dramatically from other predators in the region. The specialization reduced direct competition with other abelisaurids sharing the same territory. While Orcosaurus and other relatives relied on different hunting methods, Carnotaurus carved out its own ecological niche through speed and precision strikes. The coexistence of an unnamed ankylosaur and hadrosauroid in the La Colonia formation provided additional prey diversity that supported multiple predatory strategies. Carnotaurus proves that evolutionary success comes from specialization, not just size and strength. While other predators focused on bone crushing power, this South American hunter perfected a completely different approach through speed and precision. The discovery fundamentally changes our view of theropod diversity and adaptation strategies, showing that multiple successful paths existed within carnivorous dinosaur evolution. The next time you think about prehistoric predators, consider the many different ways um, evolution solved the challenge of survival.